Welcome to Grace for Today. Blessings to all of you. Our prayers that the Lord will bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. We are grateful for another day that he has made and he placed us right in it. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for sharing as soon as you come on. We appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, we'll get started in just a moment. We're going to give you uh, just a little time. And I want to get started. Praise the Lord and God bless everybody. Hey, Lisa Gray. All right. Hey, y'all. Hopefully, those of you who placed orders will be will be getting those out today. Those that will be mailed. There will be some that will be delivered because you're in my city or you're at my church or whatever. But God bless everybody. And um, thank you so much for supporting Grace for Today with your presence and with your um, with your with buying products and um, supporting us monthly and however the Lord has directed you to. Let's get started. So we've been talking about um, uh, King Rehoboam and how he has um, made some decisions that has produced some ha a fruit that he may not be so pleased with. So yesterday we left off when he made a wise decision to uh, get wisdom from the elders. There's always, that's always good. That's always good. Just making sure that the elders that you get advice from really are wise. That's the first thing. And we, these were the men who consulted or advised uh, his father, Solomon. So he went to the elders. We're in Second Chronicles chapter 10, verse 6. And I'm looking at the, the Christian Standard Bible. Good morning, everyone. The Christian Standard Bible. And it says this, Then King Rehoboam consulted with the elders who, uh, who had attended his father Solomon when he was alive, asking, How do you advise me to respond to this people? Remember what was the question? The question was, um, they asked, Here you had Jeroboam said to, 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 um, to Rehoboam, Lighten your father's harsh service and the heavy yoke he put on us and we will serve you so he wasn't saying they weren't going to serve he said just lighten god bless you pastor jameson uh he wasn't good they're not saying they're not going to serve just lighten the yoke your father was harsh we're still going to serve you just don't be so harsh there's a lesson in that for some of us here because sometimes we feel like if we're harsh people will serve us people will do what we say beloved I don't believe that's how God is with us he doesn't beat us down good morning to the Inzalees he doesn't beat us down to get us to obey him he said with love and kindness have I drawn thee Love and kindness have I drawn thee. Here. So you have uh, Rehoboam saying, uh, Je Jeroboam saying to King Rehoboam, lighten the burden, lighten the yoke. Some people believe, Elder Ingram, that love is just beating you down. It's being harsh. If he, if he don't beat me, he don't love me. The devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. Ah, my God, today, help us. So, the king went to the elders to get counsel. The, the, the wise, the, the older, the elders said to him, if you will be kind to this people, and please them by speaking kind words to them. When people have been wounded, when they have been mistreated, what they need isn't more harshness, more of your putting a thumb on them. What they need is kindness. And they will be loyal to you.
We we need to we need to to follow the Lord's example. When people have been through drama and trauma, they need kindness. If you will be kind because Solomon was harsh. There's a scripture, I believe David said, he said, thy gentleness has made me great. Thy gentleness has made me great. We sometimes feel like we can't be gentle with people. We can't be loving because it'll be misconstrued as weakness. It's a lie. If that's the case, then what God does is weakness. Because he loved us so much that he gave. And continues to give. Here. If you will be kind to this people. And please them by speaking kind words to them. They will be your servants forever. They will be your servants forever. They will support you. They will love you. They will follow you. They will be loyal to you. People try to beat loyalty out of you. They try to uh, use the word of God and beat you into submission. It's not scriptural. Let me read on. Second Chronicles chapter 10 verse 8 says, but he rejected the advice of the elders who had, who had advised him. Amen. God bless you, Sister Deborah. Amen. He rejected the wisdom that they gave because, hey, Sister Lisa, they had seen what Solomon did. The people worked, but they also had left. Remember, Jeroboam had fled from Solomon. He had came back to see if there could be a reconciliation. Remember that saying, it's my way or the highway? Some people would rather choose the highway than for it to be your way because your way leads to bondage for them. Love is kind. It's not just talking about the, the love from God. It's our love to each other. But when we read the word of God, we need to read the word of God, not just thinking of church folk. The word of God applies throughout our lives. And we have to grow in the fruit of the spirit is love. It's where we start by the, oh my gosh. Remember the scripture that says that in the last days that the love of many will wax cold. That's where it starts. God said the love is going to grow cold. Faith works. Y'all know that scripture. Faith worketh by love. Love is the foundation. I know people think that that's just so sappy. It may be, but that's why God sent Jesus was because he had a love for mankind. Don't you, don't you ever think that God is more concerned about you speaking in tongues and you don't love nobody. Then you wearing long dresses and a clean face. And you don't love nobody. You wearing a white shirt. And no colored shirts. That's what we grew up by. You know, you couldn't wear that. You, 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 you do all the exterior stuff. And you don't love. Let me lean in. And you don't love nobody. You don't, you don't bear the fruit that says you love. 
It's the foundation. The greatest of these is. So now you see the king. I'm not talking. Don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about this this thing where people, you know, smile all the time because that's not really always love either. But love is an action word. It demonstrates itself. We should be growing in love. You I'm not saying love says I I agree with everything you do. I don't believe that either. Cuz love will correct If you love your children, you correct them. God loves us, so he, the son whom he loves, he corrects, he chastens. So don't get this idea that if you love people, you let them do everything they want. That's a lie. That's a lie. I love my family, but when they are wrong... I cannot agree with wrong. Doesn't mean I don't love them. I love them. Love them. I'll boo and cry because I love them so much. And they won't change. It doesn't change the fact that it's still wrong. I love them though. I love my enemies. I hate it for them that God's going to get them. Oh, bless God. I hate it for them. But I love them. And yes, Brandy, we love people even if even if we didn't do anything wrong. But I have gone to the grown to the point that uh I don't know if I'm gonna ask forgiveness if I didn't do anything wrong. I used to, but Sometimes people, the enemy will make us feel condemned when we didn't do anything. They're going to have to. The scripture is clear. People sometimes need to come to themselves. We need to love people, act like, and we need to manifest that love. And we need to, we didn't do anything. We need to just love and keep moving. I'm good. Praise God, hallelujah. You got an issue? You, The Bible is clear. You got an issue. You need to come to your brother. They're not saved. Well, you know, I'm going to still keep loving you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to love you. It don't mean I'm going to give you my last dollar because you done mismanaged yours. Because this is God's money. That's a whole nother subject, y'all. We're going to have to have a Sunday night thing for some of that. But we've got to, we've got, all right. So here you have this king who rejected the wise counsel, rejected the wise counsel from the elders. Because sometimes we have a point to prove. All oh, my time is almost gone. We got a point to write where the hate that's right, Brother Sam. We're to hate sin, but we need to love the sinner. Doesn't mean I agree with your sin. I just need to let you know I love you. And I don't want that sin to take you out. Your past is past. And if you keep living there, it's going to destroy you. But I love you too much to let you believe a lie. Here, verse 8 plainly says, he rejected the advice of the elders who advised him. And he consulted with the young men who he had grown up with. Who had grown up with him. The ones attending him. The ones attending him. Sometimes we can surround ourselves with people who don't have the right frame of mind and will lead us down the wrong path with bad counsel, bad advice, and it will take us. If, Especially if God is trying to take you somewhere and you've got people around you who will just agree with you, knowing it's going to get you in a world of hurt. I don't want folks to just agree with me. 
because it's going to hurt my feelings. Tell me it's go what you're saying is wrong. What you're doing is wrong. It's not going to get, you're not going the right direction. Tell me so I can fix myself. I got the Holy Ghost. He'll agree. He'll let me know. If what you're saying, and that's why in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. Sometimes we don't want to know the truth. We don't want good counsel. Because then we have to do something with what we hear. I've been there. But I'd rather know the truth. Right, Doris, that's exactly right. I'd rather know the truth than to believe a lie. And there are people who love a lie. The Bible said it's so. They rather, they love a lie. They'd rather be lied to. Tell me I look good and knowing I'm about to die. Good morning, Sister Sandra Smith. Knowing I'm about to, I'm going to kill over in the next few minutes. It's like going to the doctor and he know your blood sugar is, 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 is 900. He said, you're looking good. You're looking good. I'm about to die. You need to tell me, you better get your cholesterol in check, your blood sugar is out of order, and you need to get all this, you need, you need to be admitted to the hospital right now. Right now, do not pass go, do not collect $200, no you can't go home, Take. we're calling the ambulance to take you to the hospital. You can't go nowhere, call somebody to bring you clothes, you can't go nowhere. You in a bad fix. We've got to be on. Here you have this young, this king rejecting truth, rejecting good advice. Sometimes we just don't want to know. And we need to be honest. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Don't tell me. I just don't. I'm going to be like the ostrich. I'm going to stick my head in the sand. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. To me, if I were sick, Tell me what, tell me what you say so I know how to pray. I didn't even intend for it to rhyme, but it sounds good. Tell me what you say so I'll know how to pray. That's all I need to know. How to direct my prayers. Hey, Clytus. Tell me what your verdict is, what you say, so I know how to go to God. Because he's got the final say. He's got the final say. I got to go. Ah, I got to go. He's got the final say. I'm just saying, I'm going to pick this up tomorrow. I'm going to pick it up tomorrow. But sometimes we don't want to know the truth. We, don't, we need to know the truth. The scripture says this. He says, buy the truth and sell it not. It says that we should want the truth so much. I'm not saying, you know, you need to be beat over the head and all that. I just think we need to want to know what the word of God says and we should want to obey it. He's not going to bludgeon you to death. God loves us. And whatever he says to us is for our protection. It's for our protection. It's for our protection. He loves us. He loves us. He loves us. Yes, he does. We're going to pick this up tomorrow. Today's Thursday, right? Yeah, we'll pick it up tomorrow. And um, I'm going to start. I'm going to try to come on right, right, right before. We, we just need to, we just got to, we got to want the truth. And I'm not talking about some of these crazy ideologies that are floating around about now. Uh, we got some crazy ones. The word of God needs to needs to line up. We need what we're thinking and saying to line up with the word of God. I'm not talking about trying to squint and see it. It needs to line up with the word of God. All right. I got to go. My, I've kept y'all longer than I'm supposed to. Father, thank you so much for your word. The entrance of your word brings light. Light our path. We will not be ignorant of Satan's devices. Open our understanding and help us to see. Help us to understand. 
You said your sheep hear your voice. And another they will not follow. Take the blinders off. Open our ears. Open our hearts. And give us discernment. Saturate our minds with your word. Give us a hunger for more of you. Prepare us for what's next. Help us to go deeper into the things of the kingdom. And we thank you for it, dear God. We honor you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. So it is. Amen. All right, everybody. I got to go. My time is gone. Way gone. All right, y'all. Don't forget to share the video. Type in Catch the Replay. Hashtag Graced for Today. Blessings to each and every one of you. I hope that you will join me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. We'll upload this to YouTube in just a moment. And I think that's it. All right. See y'all in the morning. God bless you. Appreciate all of you. And uh, don't forget to pray for somebody else. Pray for me. My name is Edna Gray Jameson. All right. Until then, remember this. Time spent in the Word of God is never wasted. And you have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.